Welcome to day 80. Today we cover paragraphs 2816 through 2821. Article 3, the seven petitions, part 2, thy kingdom come. You know, you guys only see all of the good ones of these, but I have to just tell you today that my husband is videoing me today and we are just laughing a lot today in between cuts and that is some of the reasons for lots of the smiles this week. So it's kind of funny. He said to me, I think we have more cuts this week than we have uh, good ones so far. So God's blessing with laughter and smiles is such a good thing. <laughs> lots of smiles today. So let's move into our prayer. Part two, thy kingdom come. In the New Testament, the word basilia can be translated by kingship, kingdom, or reign. The kingdom of God lies ahead of us. It is brought near in the word incarnate. It is proclaimed throughout the whole gospel, and it has come in Christ's death and resurrection. The kingdom of God has been coming since the Last Supper, and in the Eucharist, it is in our midst. The kingdom will come in glory when Christ hands it over to his Father. It may even be that the kingdom of God means Christ himself whom we daily desire to come, and whose coming we wish to be manifested quickly to us. For as he is our resurrection, since in him we rise, so he can also be understood as the kingdom of God, for in him we shall reign. This petition is Maranatha, the cry of the Spirit and the Bride, Come, Lord Jesus. Even if it had not been prescribed to pray for the coming of the kingdom, we would willingly have been have brought forth this speech, eager to embrace our hope. In indignation, the souls of the martyrs under the altar cry out to the Lord, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell upon the earth? For their retribution is ordained for the end of the world. Indeed, as soon as possible, Lord, may your kingdom come. In the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come refers primarily to the final coming of the reign of God through Christ's return. But far from distracting the church from her mission is this present world. This desire commits her to, commits her to it all the more strongly. Since Pentecost, the coming of that reign is the work of the Spirit of the Lord who completes his work on earth and brings us the fullness of grace. The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The end time in which we live is the age of the outpouring of the Spirit ever since Pentecost. A decisive battle has been joined between the flesh and the spirit. Only a pure soul can boldly say, Thy kingdom come. One who has heard Paul say, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, and has purified himself in action, thought, and word, will say to God, Thy kingdom come. By a discernment according to the spirit, Christians have to distinguish between the growth of the reign of God and the progress of the culture and society in which they are involved. This distinction is not a separation. Man's vocation to eternal life does not suppress, but actually reinforces his duty to put into action in this world the energies and means received from the Creator to serve justice and peace. This petition is taken up and granted in the prayer of Jesus, which is present and effective in the Eucharist. It bears its fruit in new life in keeping with the Beatitudes.